Greetings Malifaux fans, this is Crazy Carl from Weird Forms back with another Malifaux video battle report. Today I'm bringing you a 35 Soulstone scrap that was played, I think about a week or two ago, against Chris, who was playing Leviticus, and I was playing Kirai. <laughs> Chris commented at the beginning of the game that he's just going to start taking the Vix, and he's just going to dice up the Kirai, and I'm not looking forward to that game. I realize I've been playing Karai a lot lately, so I'm going to have to try and switch it up a little bit. But anyway, I brought along Karai with a 5 Soulstone Cash, the Insidious Madness, her 5 Station, a Lost Love, Von Schill, who hired a Primordial Magic, and an Onryo. I had Deliver a Message, Breakthrough, and Betrayed by Spirits. So I was going for a little bit of a split here, you know, getting the message through and then killing the guy off, hopefully. Chris blurred along Leviticus with an 8 Soulstone Cache, which is pretty pretty terrifying, I'll tell you what. A Watcher, uh, Jackdaw, Ashes and Dust, and a Canine Remains. He had Escape and Survive, Soulless Life, and he had Hidden Thwart. So you can see the board, lots of, lots of places to hide behind, a lot of elevated terrain, which is going to be pretty cool for the things that get placed, like the waifs and for summoning spirits and stuff like that. And for a board like this, it's Von Schell's Playground. He can just go wherever he wants and have clear lines of shot at pretty much anything, which is one of the reasons why Von Schill's so damn good. Uh, turn one, not a whole heck of a lot happened. I ended up summoning a pair of Onryo, but I had a really crappy hand and wasn't really able to do the spirit world anywhere, so I was just kind of stuck around in my deployment zone. And I summoned a bunch of Onryo up, thinking that was going to be awesome, and just like fire a ton of shots of Malevolence, which is their shooting spell at Jackdaw. And uh, spoiler alert, it doesn't really uh, work out all that well. Because apparently that spell hits non-spirits. So here you see a shot of my Insidious Madness, which was in position to be eventually spirited up to with Kirai. Um, with Lost Love and the Parma Magic staying very far behind the field to not get hit. Uh, Chris used this piece of terrain very well. He he is able to place a waif in there for quite a few turns. You can see Leviticus in the front. There was a waif behind it, and then there was another waif inside it. And um, against any other crew, that would have been really, really, really tough to deal with. Because I don't think we had any defined way of how to get into that building. Um... Which means if he had to end up summoning there, that'd be pretty rough, but it ended up not being the case. But, you know, spirits can just kind of hop in there. Here you can see the cliff where I tossed a couple of Unreal up. Um, a couple of turns went by. Not a whole heck of a lot happened. Uh, this is the turn where I shot at Jackdaw thinking I was awesome and then failed to do anything. Um, Ashes and Dust, uh, as Chris admitted, this game was not super awesome. He was really slow and didn't really do a whole lot. I was able to kill him off fairly easily multiple times. I didn't finish him off for the entire game, but... He ended up not doing a whole lot. I think he summoned like one or two Steampunk Abominations, and that was about it. Um, Chris feels that without Rusty Alice, it's, it's just Ashen's Justice isn't as powerful as it could be, which may or may not be true. I don't know. I'm not really that good with it. So he can see turn. Th it was either turn three or four. Um, it was turn three. I'd gotten a really good hand, and I was able to into the Spirit World up and summon a Shikome. And since I'd out activated Chris, I was very easily able to just go ahead and deliver the message without a problem. This is actually post, obviously post the Shikome nerf, so I didn't get to pray anything, but it didn't really matter. The fact that it doesn't count as being slow or paralyzed ever, it makes it really, really powerful, this kind of scheme. You can just see a shot of a couple models kind of spread out on the board. I, I tried to keep my models kind of spread out. That's something I'm trying with Karai, is try and keep things spread out a bit so that you have lots of avenues of escape and lots of avenues of potential attack. I'm not sure how well it worked out this game, but, you know, whatever. You can see a good shot of uh, Chris's really cool-looking Ashes and Dust there with a Steampunk Abomination that he summoned off of killing... I think he killed an Onryo, because I had a couple over there that just... Once Ashes and Dust was in their melee range, their defensive three does not keep them safe. Here's a shot from Von Schill's point of view. I really like taking Von Schill's point of view shots, because he just has such a crazy, crazy influence range. And actually, Von Schill makes Leviticus a very... much, much less frightening matchup for anybody. I would imagine, because the hollow waves, while they're easy to place where you want them to be, it's impossible to hide them from, from Von Schell. If Von Schell wants to kill them, he'll kill them. It may take a lot, but it's it's worth that kind of investment. So here we got into kind of a scrum in the middle. This is after I was able to kill off uh, Leviticus with my Ikero. Von Schell went around, killed off a couple of the waves, and that was that. Uh, Chris spent a lot of time trying to kill off Von Schell prior to this, but between Soulstone prevention flips and some good cover modifiers and, and armor and all that jazz. He wasn't, no, armor didn't really do anything, but basically the cover modifiers and uh, Soulstone Prevention Flips kept Von Schill alive long enough to fill, finish off the waves. And waves, you know, obviously pretty important to a Leviticus crew. So here you see a couple models just kind of hanging around. I 
the the the, the, the steampunk abominations didn't do a whole lot. Obviously, I mean, this, these were they were kind of incidental. But if he got if Chris had been able to get a desolation engine up, it might be able to do some damage because that aura can do a lot a lot of damage to big clumped up groups of models like Karai. Here you can see Karai's off on the side of the board uh, near the primordial magic because at this point I mean, the, after turn four, so the game was pretty much just mop up. Chris was trying to reclaim some points, trying to keep his models alive, but as it were, he misread Escape and Survive and thought his Steampunk Abominations were going to count for his points when they don't. So he was kind of uh, SOL there, if you will. And I'd gotten my deliver message really early, so I got all my points for that. Going into turn six, it was, again, just me getting out of the way, making sure that he didn't stop me from getting my breakthrough, things like that. I'd already got my Betrayed by Spirits, so I didn't have to worry about that. You can see a couple Steampunk nominations shuffling up, trying to get towards the Ashen Core to keep it, uh, to let it be able to move around a lot, which is pretty cool that they can do that, but it wasn't really going to do a whole a heck of a lot. Um, so as the, as it ended up, Chris ended up only getting two points for his Escape and Survive. He wasn't able to get his Soulless Life uh, because he didn't live enough turns. And I was able to get four points for my Deliver Message, two points for my Breakthrough, and then two points for the Betrayed by Spirits, so... It, it was kind of a lopsided game, but it was it was fun. It was a good time, um, and I hope you guys enjoyed it as much as I did, and I will see you soon with another video.